Hi, uh, this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of Engineering. So we previously saw what is short circuit, what are its causes, what are its effects, and why it is uh, important. And in this class, we will just see a systematic algorithm to evaluate the short circuit currents and short circuit KVA at any bus in the power system. So we will see the algorithm for calculating the short circuit currents using the bus impedance matrix. And later on, we'll see how to build the bus impedance matrix. Okay. So basically, the bus impedance matrix is the inverse of the admittance matrix. And you have seen in the first unit how to calculate the admittance matrix. So you can uh, find out the bus impedance matrix by taking uh, taking the inverse of the admittance matrix. So the short circuit current due to the short circuit at various buses, it can easily be estimated using the Z bus building algorithm for building the Z bus. And the bus impedance matrix can be built using the algorithm which we will discuss or it can be computed as the inverse of the Y bus. We have to make modifications to some of the elements which we do not include in our regular load flow studies. So you have already done load flow studies using different methods, namely the Gauss CDL, Newton Raphson, FDLF, etc. And uh, you know how the equations are formulated. So we have to make some slight modifications which we'll be studying in this uh, lecture. We'll be seeing that. And uh, as I told you previously, short circuit current estimation is necessary for proper choice of circuit breakers. So let's start off with a general network as shown. Uh, I have shown only the generator buses and in between you also have non-generator buses and the loads can be connected to the generator buses and also to non-generator buses. So you know in detail about the different uh, classifications of buses in the power system. So now what is our objective? Our objective is to evaluate the short circuit current when a short circuit occurs at any of the buses in the network. It could be any, any one of uh, from the N buses in the network. So in the previous class, we saw some simple way of calculating the short circuit uh, current which we cannot use for larger networks. So we will see how you can do it for any general network. That's the objective of this lecture. So let's consider a short circuit occurs at a bus K, at a bus K. Now, how do I model from a circuit viewpoint, how do I model a short circuit at a bus? So what I can do is I can just simply connect a switch between the bus and the ground. So when I close the switch, what happens? The bus gets connected to the ground, which is the circuit equivalent of simulating a short circuit, okay? And now if there is a fault impedance, I only have to connect a impedance in series with the switch to take care of the short circuit impedance. So this switch emulates a short circuit and uh, we can represent ZF as the fault impedance. Now to evaluate the short circuit current, what I do is I use Thevenin's theorem, right? What does Thevenin's theorem tell you? If I have a network, I can replace the entire network with a voltage source, which we call as a Thevenin's voltage in series with the Thevenin's impedance. And what is the Thevenin's voltage? It is nothing but the open circuit voltage at the terminals of interest. So Thevenin's Theorem, normally if you apply for one port, Thevenin's voltage is the open circuit voltage at the port of interest. And what is Thevenin's impedance? It is the impedance, passive impedance of the rest of the network, of the rest of the network. So we will see how we can use this in our present analysis. So as I said, for Thevenin's theorem, I need the Thevenin's voltage at the bus of interest, which is nothing but the no load voltage. Okay, 
Now, here I can treat in this particular analysis, I will treat the short circuit as a load, right? If there is no fault impedance, the short circuit can be viewed simply as a load of zero impedance, right? When a load has zero impedance, it just means that you're shutting the terminals to the ground. And if you have a fault impedance, the fault impedance can be the load impedance. So what I do is, if I view the short circuit as a load at the bus where it occurs, right? Then what is my open circuit voltage? Open circuit voltage is obviously by definition, the voltage at the bus without the load. That means without the short circuit. Clear? I repeat, I'm going to use Thevenin's theorem here. And I view the short circuit as a load of zero impedance. And if I view that as a load, then the open circuit voltage is nothing but the voltage at the bus terminals without the short circuit. Clear? So in this model, like you have done in your load flows, I'll model the generators as voltage sources behind their transient reactants in short circuit and also in stability studies, which we will see later. Right now, what is my voltage at the bus without the short circuit? How do I get it? So what do I have without the short circuit? Without the short circuit, I have the generators, I have the loads and I have the network. Clear? So I want the voltage at a particular bus. What is that voltage? That is nothing but the voltage obtained at that bus by your load flow studies. Clear? So when you do the load flow study, you have the entire network, you have the given generations, you have the given loads, and you solve for the network voltages. There is no short circuit anywhere in the network. So from a circuit viewpoint, I can treat all these bus voltages as the required voltage for my Thevenin's theorem application. Clear? So whichever bus you are uh, going to simulate a short circuit, the voltage at that bus obtained from load, load flow study is the Thevenin's voltage of interest at that bus. So let me write the entire pre-fault voltage vector as follows. V bus O, zero, that is before fault, is V1, zero, V2, zero, Vn, zero. These are nothing, this is nothing but the vector of bus voltages you obtain from the load flow studies, from the load flow studies, okay? Then how do I model the short circuit? So during the fault, these voltages will change because of the presence of the short circuit current. Therefore, I will treat the bus voltages as equal to the pre-fault voltage plus some change in the voltage due to the short circuit, right? So what do I have to compute now? I have to compute what is this change in the voltage when the short circuit occurs. So I represent VIF. So VIF is the voltage at any bus I during the fault. It's equal to VI0, that is the pre-fault voltage, which you get from the load flow, plus some delta VI. Delta VI is the change in the bus voltage, which is what I have to uh, compute right now, evaluate that. So let me model to get the passive impedance, let me model the entire network like this. So you know, you know what is the Thevenin's impedance. It is the impedance of the entire network, passive impedance of the entire network at the bus of interest, at the port of interest, right? So let us say I have the entire network, passive network of original uh, power system, right? So what do I do to evaluate the Thevenin's uh, equivalent impedance? Uh, I just inject a current IK, right? You just see here, I'm injecting a current at the bus of interest, which is bus K. This is a very common technique used to evaluate Thevenin's impedance. So one way of doing Thevenin's impedance is VOC by IAC. Now I can't find out I, IAC here, right? So what I do, uh, the other way is you inject a known current, then the ratio of V and I will give you the Thevenin's impedance, okay? So this is how I'm modeling the entire network for evaluating the Thevenin's impedance. 
So now let's see what are my equations. So to represent the passive network, we consider all impedances. Okay. Now, if you remember, you recollect your load flow studies. When you form the bus admittance matrix, what are the elements you consider? You consider the transmission line uh, resistance, reactance, and the half line charging admittance. And you would also consider any shunt element like a shunt capacitor or a shunt reactor connected at the various buses. Right now, the generators, we don't model the voltage of the generator because in load flow study, I'm interested only in the terminal voltage. So the generators are modeled by P and Q, PGI and QGI. Similarly, the loads are also modeled as a constant power load. So in load flow, at a load bus, you will model it as PLI plus QLI, right? So we do not consider the generator internal transient reactants, okay? So when you do a short circuit analysis or for your transient stability programs, we have to consider these reactances. So where is a generator, generator connected? At a particular bus. So it is connected between, so in a single line diagram, the generator would appear between the bus and the ground. Okay, so if you, if you just go back to your first uh, figure, yeah, here. So if you just see here, this generator, it's connected at bus number one, bus number one. So I would model the internal reactance would be here. So where would it appear? It would appear between bus one and the ground. Okay, so you have to consider these uh, internal, the transient reactance of the generators into your bus admittance matrix. So it will be like a shunt element between the generator bus and the ground. You must consider this when you form the matrix. Okay, next. The loads in load flows are represented as constant power loads. Okay, now you have to replace them by their equivalent impedance given by this. So at the load bus, ZIL, is equal to VI0, that is whatever voltage you get from load flow squared, divided by SIL conjugate. SIL conjugate is the complex, SIL is the complex load power at bus I. You already know that from the data which you would have used for your load flows. Now remember one thing, this model is not very accurate because the voltage during the fault is going to change. It's no longer going to be VI0. It's going to be VI0 plus some delta V. But then I told you the short circuit currents are going to be really large, really large. So this, uh, you know, modeling it this way doesn't cause any significant error. Because remember, when we are estimating short circuit currents, accuracy is not a major issue. That means I don't need to know whether the short circuit current is 6.234 per unit or 6.236 per unit. It would hardly make a difference. The major objective of the short circuit studies is to choose proper switch gear. So a few uh, amperes here and there does not make a difference. So we can sacrifice easily the accuracy and we can model the loads uh, this way. This is called as impedance modeling of the load or passive modeling of the load. I'm modeling the load as, a, as an impedance, right? So there are two changes you have to make to your bus admittance matrix from the one you have used in load flow. The first change is you have to include the generator transient reactants, which is nothing but a shunt element between the generator bus and the ground and you have to consider the impedances of the load calculated in this manner. So once you include this along with the network elements and other elements you have used, you form the Y bus and then take the inverse to calculate the Z bus or we'll later on be seeing how you can calculate the Z bus by using a systematic step-by-step -step algorithm, okay? Uh, in some studies, you can even neglect the load impedance also because it's very large compared to the impedances of the lines and generators. Even if you neglect it, it will not cause much of an error. Clear? So now my network equation, 
using the impedance can be written in matrix form in this fashion. So here V1, V2, Vn are the terminal voltages of all the buses and I1, I2, In, these are the injected currents and Z1, 1, Z1, 2, etc. These are the elements of the Z bus matrix. Remember, the Z bus matrix is slightly different from the one you obtain from the load flow studies because of the inclusion of the elements I mentioned. So now what I do in, in this matrix, in, in this previous matrix, I inject, I inject a current only at bus K, right? I inject a current only at bus K and all the other currents are zero. All the other currents are zero. Why am I doing this? I am doing it to evaluate the Thevenin's impedance. Okay. So if I evaluate only uh, an element, a current at bus K, then VK, the voltage of bus K would simply be ZKK IK. You can easily look, look, uh, look into the previous uh, matrix here. So I have only IK here, IK here. So any element, all the, so all these are zeros. Therefore, VK would simply be equal to ZKK into IK, right? And therefore, ZKK is equal to VK by IK, right? What am I achieving out of this? Nothing, except that when I have a current injection only at bus K and all the rest of the network is replaced by the passive network, then the ratio of VK to IK is the Thevenin's impedance. Clear? I repeat, when you inject a current at your port of interest, then the rest of the network replaced by the passive network, then the ratio of the voltage at the port terminals to the injected current is nothing but the Thevenin's impedance. By definition of Thevenin's impedance from circuit theory. And I have just shown you that Z KK is VK by IK, where VK by IK is the Thevenin's impedance. Therefore, therefore, the diagonal element of your Z bus matrix is the Thevenin's impedance at that particular bus. Clear? So I have, I have both the Thevenin's voltage and the Thevenin's impedance. What is the Thevenin's voltage at bus K? It is the voltage obtained from your load flow study at bus K, right? And what is the Thevenin's impedance? Thevenin's impedance is the diagonal element of the bus, at bus impedance matrix. The bus impedance matrix should include the load impedances and also the generator transient reactance. Clear? So now that I know both the Thevenin's voltage and the Thevenin's uh, current, I can model uh, the entire system as follows. So this is my bus of interest. This is my bus of interest. And I have Z Thevenin. I have already found out Z Thevenin which is nothing but ZKK, the diagonal element. And I have found out V Thevenin. V Thevenin is nothing but the uh, load flow voltage. And I model the short circuit by a switch in series with the fault impedance. Clear? So now I have got a very simple, beautiful circuit model for my entire network. The network can be of any size, any size. It could be a grid, of a, a, a big, large grid. It could be a, a, a 137 IEEE uh, bus system, any, any system. So I have got a very simple model of the system to simulate my short circuit. So how do I simulate my short circuit? I simply have to close this switch. So when I close this switch, what would be the current? Very easy. The current would simply be IKF. So K is the bus where the short circuit occurs. F stands for the short circuit fault. Is nothing but the only source I have here V is VK0. And I have two impedances, ZKK by ZF, right? And if ZF is zero, then it would simply be VK by ZKK. Clear? So what is this? This is the short circuit current. This is the fault current. 
Clear? So I have estimated the fault current. Okay, so now using this fault current, you can uh, get an idea, you can determine what should be the breaker of, uh, to be installed at this particular bus, the circuit breaker rating. Because I told you in my previous lecture that the breaker should withstand the short circuit current. Okay, so one part of my job is over. I have calculated the short circuit current. You can do it at any bus, right? Because K is only the bus number. Once you have the load flows, you have the voltage at all the buses and ZKK is simply the diagonal element. So you can calculate the fault current for a short circuit at any of the buses. So first job is over. I have one more job pending. What is that? To calculate the change in the bus voltages because of this fault, right? So what do, what do I do, right? I use the same matrix relationship. V is equal to Z into I, right? But please remember there, I are the current injections. I are the current injections at a particular bus K. Now, if you look here, how, what is the direction of flow of the short circuit? It is from bus K to the ground, right? That's the direction of the flow. What is the injection? Injection is into bus K. Therefore, if I want to inject the same fault current, then it'll be, I'll have to inject minus IK of F. So I want you all to be very clear of the negative sign. The negative sign is because in my matrix equation, V is equal to ZF, which we saw earlier. There, sorry, V is equal to ZI. I is the injection current vector. So here the current is away from the bus. So the current into the bus is minus, okay? So I inject, this fault current flows out of the bus. Therefore, current injection is minus IK of F. The change in the voltage due to this current injection can be easily calculated as follows, yeah? So now you see, this is your same Z bus matrix, no change, okay? Now, what is the current I have? I have, I am injecting a current minus IK of F only at bus K where the short circuit has occurred. And these are all the change in the voltages. These are the change in the voltages. Essentially, I am using superposition. So I am finding out what is the voltage at the different buses due to the short circuit. And if I add it to the pre-fault voltage, then that will give me the voltage during the fault. That is by, because I'm assuming a linear network and hence I can apply superposition, right? So now you see here, all the currents are zero. The current injections all are zero except this. So what would be delta V1, right? So delta V1 would simply be Z1K into minus IK of F, right? Only this will be of interest. Only these elements will give me a non-zero value when I do the matrix multiplication. So delta V2, delta V2 would be Z2K into minus IK of F. Delta VK would be ZKK into minus IK of F, okay? So I can write in general any VI, delta VI, that is the change in voltage at any bus I is equal to ZIK minus ZIK into IK of F, okay? So VI of F, that is the voltage at bus I during the fault is equal to VI zero, that is the pre-fault voltage got from your load flow study, plus delta VI. And delta VI, just now we have shown here, it's minus ZIK, IK of F. And IK of F, I have calculated this. So you see, it's a very, very simple formula, right? I don't have to do anything extra. I don't have to do anything extra. So uh, this equation, with this equation, I can find out the short circuit current at any bus and determine the rating of the switch gear and other apparatus for that particular bus. I can determine the change in the voltages for a fault at any bus. Clear? So don't you agree? It's very simple, pretty simple, not too many calculations. So now let us see. What else I can do with this? What else I can do with this, right? So now I know, I know the voltages during the fault at all the buses. 
So using that, I can calculate the current in any line during the fall. What will the current in a line, general line IJ? It will be VIF minus VJ of F. That is the difference in the voltages at the two ends of the lines divided by ZIJ line. I have put line here to uh, highlight the fact that here ZIJ is not the element of the bus admittance matrix. It is the line impedance. ZIJ is the impedance of the line IJ. Clear? So IIJ, I can find out this. So what are, what are you going to do with this? this uh, why, why do I need this study? Why do I need to calculate the current flow in all the lines? You can find out which are the lines which are likely to get open because of the short circuit. You know, every line is protected by overcurrent relays. Every line is protected by overcurrent relays. And therefore, there's a likelihood that some lines may get, you know, highly overloaded because of the short circuit and they may trip. So you must be prepared for it. You must be prepared for it. So when I am doing an offline analysis, when I am doing an offline analysis, I try to make an estimate and try to be prepared for any contingency that may occur because of short circuits, right? And this is only a computation. Offline, you can do an exhaustive computation of short circuits at all the buses and make an assessment of all the critical lines uh, which would get affected because of a short circuit at a particular bus. So this is one uh, data you can mine from the change in the bus voltages, okay? Next, what else can I do? Let me see whether the generators, what happens to the generator currents. So I have the pre-fault generator current is equal to PGI minus JQGI by VI conjugate, right? So you know what is the generated power, P and Q. So from that, VI is the terminal voltage. That is the terminal voltage of the generator bus. You can find out what is the current, right? What is the current supplied by the generator? So this is the current the generator is injecting. This is what you would get from your load flow study. Using this current, I can make an assessment of the internal voltage of the generator. Now, please remember, I'm not interested in the internal voltage in load flow studies. My load flow studies all revolves around the terminal voltage. So my generator internal voltage doesn't come into picture in the load flow study, right? So here I can make an estimate of the internal voltage, which is nothing but EGI dash. Okay, the dash is used to show that it's the transient condition. Is VI0 plus JXDD dash IGI0. So this is your transient reactance. So normally in short circuit studies and stability studies, we represent the generator as a voltage source behind its transient direct axis, transient reactance, okay? The subtransient reactance lasts, the subtransient period lasts for a very short time and your breakers cannot operate so fast and therefore we consider the transient reactance. So what am I doing now? I am making an estimate of the generator internal voltages from the load flow studies. Then, I assume that this internal voltage is unchanged, obviously, because the internal voltage is directly determined by the excitation of the generators. And during the fault, I can calculate the fault current which the generator has to supply as EGI dash, that is the internal voltage calculated from pre-fault current. assumed to be constant during the fault and it's given by IGI of F is EGI dash minus VI of F. I have calculated the voltage during the fault divided by J X G D dash. So the other computation you can make is to calculate the internal voltages of the generators and from that make an assessment 
of the fault currents in the generators during the fault. So now let me see whether I can put the entire thing as an algorithm, whatever we have discussed. So what is the first thing you do? You form the Z bus, form the Z bus, right? And in this, what are the two points you have to remember? You have to include the generator transient reactants and you have to include the loads modeled as impedances. Then you perform the load flow and calculate the pre-fault voltages, right? And calculate fault current for the short circuit at bus K, right? Using equation one. And remember here in load flows, don't consider the generator reactances. Do like how you do your regular load flow by any method which is convenient. And then calculate fault current for the short circuit at bus K and compute the voltages during the fault and calculate line currents during the fault and calculate generator currents during the fault, right? So this is the step-by-step -step algorithm which you do for your short circuit study for a network of any size, clear? So now let me illustrate this with a simple example. So consider this example. This is a simple three bus system with two generators, with two generators, okay? And uh, I have the rest of the network, okay? And if, if even as a further simplification, you can blindly assume all the pre-fault voltages to be one per unit, right? Why? We know that before the fault, the system is running in a normal state. And we also know that in a normal state, all the bus voltages are close to one per unit, right? So even if you want to avoid the load flow, fine, avoid it. You assume all the bus voltages to be one per unit. Even this will not cause a significant error because I told you my interest is not accuracy. My interest is not accuracy. So a small error is not going to make much difference in short circuit studies. Okay. So in this uh, system, let me, how this is how you proceed. So I don't run the load flow. I don't run the load flow. So I assume all the pre-fault voltages to be one per unit, one per unit, because I don't have any data on what are the loads and uh, generations, etc. Now I form the Y bus and here, uh, just uh, see here. Yes, when you form the Y bus, you have to, uh, uh, I, when I do for the load flow, I will not be considering these impedances. You have to consider the transient uh, impedance given here of the generator, which is 0.12 per unit. So this has to be considered when you do the short circuit evaluation because this impedance will significantly reduce fault currents, okay? If you exclude this impedance, then you may get unreasonably large uh, currents and uh, you may be using breakers of a higher rating. So I have the Y bus formed by using your uh, general Y bus algorithm and I take the inverse of that to get the Z bus. I form the Z bus, okay? So if you don't assume the pre-fault voltages to be one for, per unit, then perform the load flow and get the voltages. Now, first let me assume a fault at bus one. Okay, very simple. Fault current, very simple. One divided by Z11. Z11 is 0.16 per unit. And the fault impedance I have taken as 0.15. So this is the short circuit current. So it's around 3.2 per unit okay what is the next step what is the next step so please see here it is minus j 3.226 why this minus j because j is in the denominator okay next for change in the bus voltages i have delta v1 delta v2 delta v3 this is my z bus which we saw and what is this current this current is minus ik of f so here k is the faulted bus, which is bus number one, and minus of it. So the fault current itself is minus J3.226. So here it is negative of that, which is J3.226. So if you don't, 
have this J minus here, you will make a mistake here and all your answers will be wrong. So please pay attention to that. So using this, I can find out delta V1, delta V2, delta V3. Just simply, it would be this into this. That's all. These two are zero. So it would be uh, J0.161 into J3.226. So it is minus 0 0.516, minus 0.259, and minus 0.389 per unit. Okay. These are the changes in the bus voltages of bus 1, 2, and 3. This is the ne next step. After this, what do I do? I calculate all the voltages during the fault. It is the pre-fault voltage plus the change in the voltage. Okay, so I get these values. Now I want to draw your attention to this, that all these values are much less than one per unit. And in the previous lecture, I told you that short circuits would drastically reduce the bus voltages. Now you think that at this bus, if there are some loads connected, then till such time that this fault is cleared, the loads would be seeing these low voltages and it may damage the equipment caused, uh, the equipment connected to that particular bus. Okay, so after calculating the uh, voltages during the faults, what do we do? Calculate the line currents during the fault. Okay, so I have three lines here, two, one, two, three, and one, three. So I calculate the line, line currents. This is the line currents during the fault. And then, so I have done all the calculations. Next, supposing I consider a fault at bus 2 instead of at bus 1. Nothing, it's not going to complicate your life. Everything is going to be the same, except that here I would take Z22 instead of Z11. Okay, and I have assumed all the pre-fault voltages to be 1 per unit. So it would be uh, this. So my fault current is minus J2.94. So a short circuit at bus 2 causes a lesser level than at bus 1. Okay, and I compute the change in the voltages uh, similar to as I did in the previous case. So what are all the information you are getting from uh, these uh, uh, studies? What are all the information you're getting from these studies? So if you have a system, you can do an offline analysis and simulate short circuits at all the buses and find out which are the most critical buses. Or if you have an actual grid, you know which portion of the grid is vulnerable to lightning attacks because of the weather conditions or because of the location. And therefore, you already know that these are the buses where short circuits occur very often. And so you have to take extra care to protect these buses. So with this, with, uh, with the short circuit study, you can get a number of information. And remember, short circuit studies, I don't have to do it in real time. We don't do it in real time, okay? It's normally an offline study done to assess your system, to assess the criticality of short circuits in the system. Identify which are the critical uh, buses in the system and also make an assessment of the ratings required for all the protective uh, switch gear and the associated apparatus with that. And also get an idea of what is the worst condition which your equipment would be subjected to. And uh, can you, is your equipment immune to this condition? Okay, so these are all the studies you have to do before your network is laid. Okay, so this would form a part of an analytical tool for design. I hope you got all the points. Thank you.